All right, boys, the burning question that you're all asking. Start of season four, did we manage to get Mariba back? Let's find out. Transfer special. We've got two seasons left of this save. It will be a five-season save. We are the Europa Conference League champions. We're in the Europa League. Let me know after you've seen the signings, number one, which one takes your fancy? Which? And then what do you think we can do this year as Crystal Palace? Can we push for top four? Or is it maintaining that level? And it would be really good if we can win a domestic cup. We're really going to go for the Carabao and the FA Cup this season. All right, let's get into today's The Eagles. Smash a like on today's video for me. Shout out as well to all the Patreons coming along the screen. Thank you for your support in FM21. And if you'd like to support the channel a little bit more, links to everything down below, including a 10% discount. If you use discount code FMTREK at 2game.com, you get 10% off your order for Football Managers of 2022. Link as well. Helps you out, helps me out a little bit as a creator as well. So I'd appreciate if you go check that out. Right, here we go. Let's see who we have picked up this season in the Eagles. Oh boy, so you want to know if we got Mariba back. Barcelona, we put a loan deal in. Barcelona said they wanted to give him some first team opportunities. I made an offer regardless of that. And I'm happy to say we got him back. We're paying £200,000 a month as in a loan fee. So what? We're looking at what? Like 2.5 million for the loan deal. Mariba, in all competitions last year, 40 appearances, nine goals, seven assists, average rating of 7.05. No doubt is going to be even better for us this season yeah if we could just look if we could just break the fm sort of like transfer ai that would be good for one more season and then we'll have the full five seasons with mariba that would be not five seasons four seasons with mariba that would be perfect as you can see with his attributes he's on the on the improvement i think what goes so well and we play so well with him in the middle of the park is his physicals are very good even though his tackling is only 10 his physicals are very good and he's very good at breaking up play um, he's not just a ball player, you know, six foot one. He's got the physical attributes to help us in that four man midfield. And then the other one was Reese Nelson, a player that we love. He unfortunately missed out of the final because of injury. But bizarrely, we managed to get Reese Nelson back as well. We're paying a hundred grand a week. So the loan deal has cost us what? 1.2 million pounds. So really chuffed to have him back paying all of his wages. He racked up an impressive 31 appearances, six goals, but 12 assists. We need a little bit more in terms of appearances. He does pick up sort of like two, maybe three injuries throughout the season though. That just cost him a little bit and he misses big games and, and normally it's normally like a torn hamstring and he misses a couple of months or something like that. Um, but yeah, really chuffed to get Reese Nelson in. Okay, that is the reloans done. I'm going to show you the outs first. And the first one is Ozan Tufan. He's headed to Watford where he's actually gone in real life. We got 12.75 million, so we made a little bit of a loss on him. No, we didn't. We made a, we made a profit on him, actually, because we signed him for 10. So we made a little bit of profit on him. During his career, he's made a handful of appearances, a lot of sub appearances for us. A decent backup. He wanted to go. We've made money. It's helped us reinvest in the squad. Vignato has also gone. He has gone for 22.5 million. So we managed to make a nice little bit of profit on him. 4 million considering 13 appearances, 15 a sub, only one goal and two assists. We are a we're strong in them areas with players like Eze and Reese Nelson, Zaha can all play out wide, Tishkan off as well. So we didn't need to keep him managed to make. It was a silly deal. It was a last minute deal. And I've used Vignato numerous times in other saves. So I think that's the reason why I brought him in. And uh, yeah, we have, we've got rid and made profit again. Nathan Ferguson's another player you might have remember. We used him a fair bit in the first season. He was sort of like back up right back. And then he's been on the under 23s. We got 750k for him. He was on about 30 grand a week as well. So it was nice to get that off the books. Jean-Philippe Matata, we've strengthened in the striking department. We've already got Zaha, we've got Turam. We didn't need another. Um, so he has gone, we've made profit on him just a little bit. 14 million, 14.5 million for Matata. He's done quite well for us. He'd scored what? Well, he'd scored 33 goals for us in all competitions over those sort of like three seasons. So I'm chuffed. I'm chuffed. I'm happy for him to move on. We just, he wanted more game time. He was on a bit of money. It, it, it's helped us bring one more player in. And also we've, we've brought a little fruity little gem in on a free transfer as well. So yeah, Matata has gone. 
Jamal Lascelles has also gone. He's gone for 3.8 million to championship side West Ham. They got relegated last season. He just he wasn't that bothered, to be honest. And I just thought, look, he's he's barely played for us in the what the two seasons we had him. We signed him for 5.25. We've made a loss on him, but he was just there as cover. He was always happy. He never, even though his average ratings were an absolute stink bomb of 6.47 and 6.53 in the in the in the league, he actually did all right for us, but he has gone to West Ham. Nathaniel Shalabar has gone to Celta Vigo. He was wanted. We haven't used him as much. He wasn't necessarily asking for a move, but he's only made four starts for me over them two seasons. We've made a million pound on him as well, so we wish him well. A surprise one maybe for some of you is Tim Shirk. Now, I wasn't in the search as a right back. I was happy for him to stay. However, he came to me and said that he wasn't going to get... He had a year left on his deal. He wouldn't sign a new one because he didn't think he was going to get a work permit. So with that in mind, we've made a we've made an actually good substantial loss on him. We've made a 3.6 million loss on him. I was quite happy for him to stay, even though his average ratings of 6.6 .6 and 6.74 in the league. I, he was actually a half-decent right back for us. He was actually a half-decent right back, but I didn't want to have a player in the squad that number one was going to leave on a free anyway, and number two was not was then going to get refused a work permit. So we've got him out. He's, going, he's gone to Nice. We've made a little bit back on him. And that leads us on to our first signing. Okay, our only new loan signing is Teden Mengi. He has come from Manchester United on loan. He's going to become our... Second choice right back. Tremendous physicals, as you can see. Not so much great in terms of going forward, but we don't ask a lot of our right back. He can also do a job for us at centre-half as well, so a nice player to have to win amongst the squad. We're paying, I believe we're paying, yeah, we're paying all of his loans, but it's only 20 grand a week. Okay, boys, that's the loan -y. We have got four free transfers to show you and then two big signings at a combined price of £65 million. Our first one through the door is James Trafford. Now, he looks about 10 years old in the pro profile that we've got on the first pack. He's our backup keeper. Remember, Joe Hart retired at the end of the season. We needed to do something in terms of just a backup. And he came in. Manchester City had released him. It made sense to get him in. He, I've seen him in the game become half decent. Three star potential. He's currently at two star. I'm very happy to have him in as a very cheap backup. English as well, which always helps, always helps with Europa League. Um, and European, uh, European squad sort of like list, so I'm very happy to have another English goalkeeper in. Second one in is Trevor Chalabar. Now, I kind of signed him because we'd lost his brother, um, for one. He was available on a free transfer, and he's done quite well for Chelsea at the start of the season in real life, so I've based it on nothing really revolving around football manager, but there we go. 21,000, happy to be an emergency back. We're playing Europa. We want to go well in Carabao Cups and FA Cups, so we hopefully will get a little bit more game time. Similar to his brother as well, can do three positions, side front of the back four, centre half, centre midfield, but he's also not too shabby. He's also done a little bit of football at right and left back as well. So yeah, decent squad player. He's not going to set the world alight for us this year, but it's a freebie. Couldn't say no. The third and fourth signings are two big free transfers, I think. So the first one is Nemandi Collins. Free transfer, Borussia Dortmund released him. I used him in my little Dortmund save when we were promoting youth, and he did very, very well. He's 19 years old, six foot three. His strength, we're already training him on, working on that. But pace, 18. Mentals are not great, but we're getting there in terms of his bravery is good at least. Positioning 14. Remember, he's only 19. First touch, 15. Heading, 13. Passing, 16. Marking, 6. So there's, there's the downfall. But I did have an, an idea of him sort of like being my kind of a second choice right back. And I just thought it was a little bit too good to turn down. His marking is really low. Lower than what it was in my Borussia Dortmund save. But um, yeah, he's a free transfer. I think I can get some out of him. All right, so that was Collins. Now, this one is something a little bit special. It is Myron Badu. Really chuffed to get him in. Now, I've kind of got him in one because he's free. He's now rated 53 million. He's a bit of an upgrade on Brobby. We've actually let Brobby go. He's out on loan at Hamburg this year. So we need his strength and depth. Definitely on the similar sort of like lines of Brobby, but, uh, Brobby, but an upgrade. As you can see from his attributes, very good physicals. We got him on a free chance. I believe he's actually signed for Monaco, I think, this summer. Has done pretty well at AZ. There's not many appearances in the league in the last season. But at the age of 22, back up for us, going to be definitely, and sell on potential sell on value in the summer. If he has a whirlwind of a season, the big boys will definitely come shopping for Badu. 
Let's get on to our two paid signings for this summer. Number one is Briel Embolo. We've got him in for £20 million from Fiorentina. They only had him for a season. They paid 7.75, and only, but he only scored seven goals. But what I've gone for him is we look at the attributes. He fits our style of play. Number one, he can do a job for us in terms of wing. The right-hand side is a right winger who's comfortable playing there, which is good. Tremendous physicals, tremendous mentals. He's a striker as well, presser. Six foot one, can hold the ball. You know, we've got players like Turam, Nelson, um, Zahar, all big, direct and strong. He adds a little bit more strength in depth up there. Only rated three star, but runs down the right, plays with his back to goal as well and works with one too. So hopefully he'll link up really well with Turam. I think him, Mbolo and Turam up front does look pretty dangerous. I imagine most defences would be quite scared about the physicality and the pace that them two bring together so there is Briel Imbolo in for 20 million pounds and the big one this summer is Declan Rice now yes we've paid 45 million pounds for Declan Rice the main reason was because we had to get in early because loads of other teams sort of like Everton's and them sort of tides were coming and looking at Declan Rice he'd been relegated with West Ham he wanted to leave his technicals aren't great, but I do think he could do the central midfield support role. I was looking at, right, we're probably not going to get Mariba back, so we need a new midfield. And I was thinking, right, Tonelli can move across to be the advanced playmaker on support. Uh, Declan Rice can then be the central midfield on support, and we've still got an outstanding combination of those two in there. Mariba stayed, so now we've got Rice, Tonelli and Mariba all together. But remember, we've got 60-plus games this season, so there's going to be opportunities. Tonelli and Mariba as well, they often struggle with fitness playing in that sort of like that two-man midfield. So instead of using a, a, an Ozan or a Shalabar, we can play Rice. We've also got Sander Burge in there, so we've got four really good options in there to really help us kick on and make sure that we're not overworking some of these superstars. So Declan Rice is our most expensive signing of the summer. Right, here we go. Let me know your thoughts. So those are the signings. Let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think to the signings? I know Declan Rice was a lot, but we've I think we've done well. Now, there is potential one other player coming in, and that is Lucas Klosterman. We're getting him hopefully for £2 million. The reason why I've got him in because Semedo, Semedo is wanted by Real Madrid. The first bid for Semedo has come in, £22 million. I asked for 40 They said no. Now, uh, Semedo wants to go. He's agreed that if they offer £50 million, he'll go. Um, so that's fine. But I thought we'd get another one in. He can do three jobs, six foot two, left back comfortable. Adara Molo and Mitchell do struggle at times with le at left back with, with fitness. So I thought another option out there would be good. Another centre half option is always good. And then he can do full back as well. Not great technically, but physical is really good. He's, he's a decent all rounder. Two million pounds as well. I don't think he's to be sniffed at. So we'll just wait on that one. There is a number of clubs in for him. So we'll have to wait and see. So. There is the squad. The tactic is the tactic. We're not going to be moving away from that. We've done very well in pre-season, look. All wins, all greens, but it is Tottenham away in the league. They've got Jadon Sancho. We've not done well away from home against Spurs, so a good positive performance to kick us off would be good. Now, the end of last season obviously saw us lift the Europa Conference League, but it's the Europa League. We finished sixth. We finished above Chelsea. I think seven, if we finish seventh, I would. I don't want to say I'd take seventh, but I think realistically, seventh is going to be the most realistic position. And fingers crossed we can be the best of the rest. Yeah, maybe win an FA Cup, your Carabao Cup to get us into the Europa League. We, we push Champions League. We're only eight points off it in the end, but the other teams are going to probably strengthen a whole lot better. Ours has been more retaining and bolstering the squad rather than standout players to move us onto that net level. We're still short in terms of, I think, that absolute quality. But I'm very pleased to keep hold of the big boys. Butland was bids from Bournemouth, weirdly. Um, Ayer was wanted as well at certain points in the summer. Tonelli, Manchester United came sniffing round £40 million. We turned that down. There is still a little bit of time in the transfer market, but I'm not really prepared to let anyone go. Marcus Turan is unhappy because we didn't play him in his favourite position. Eze wanted by Hertha. Tiago Almeida has been wanted by her. They went up to £45 million for him, which I've turned down. He's now rated at £50 million. He's going to be an absolute, fingers crossed, superstar for us this season. Right, let's pick a team. I think it's kind of boys. The kind of team picks itself a little bit. We're going to go in Bolo and Turan to start with. Zahar can just have a place on the bench. He's not necessarily going to like that. 
Semedo can come in at right back. Mitchell, our first choice, left midfield. And Nelson, yeah, I think that's our strongest 11 with maybe Zaha. You could argue Zaha is maybe good enough to be playing. We've also called up Nico Williams as well. He's going to get probably some game time, hopefully, in the Europa League. And fingers crossed we can get a really nice draw in the Europa League. So it just gives us the opportunity to rotate a little bit. Because players like Eze, Zaha, Tishkanov, Declan Rice, Sander Burge, Boudou are all going to want game time. So there is a starting eleven. I really just look at the bench. Mengi, Burge, Rice, Boudou, Tishkanov, Eze and Zaha. We've got a squad, I think. We've got a squad. Right, let's see how we get on anyway against the Super Spurs. Right, here we go. Four minutes into the Premier League season. We don't do well here at Tottenham Stadium. They've kind of... The games have been tight in terms of results, but either time, both times we've played them, I think the last two times, we've been really backs against the wall and they've dominated for large parts of the game. And they're doing it already. 67% possession to our 35. Right, Semedo, Mbolo, Semedo, Mariba, Ugarte's picked it up. Can we press? Can we press? Can we press? We do. We're going to get that. We're going to get it. We do. Mitchell. Tonelli. Almeida. Almada. <laughs> Tonelli. We're a little bit tight, Mitchell. I'm a little bit scared of a break from Spurs. We've gone long. We've lost it. Here is the break. We didn't need to do that pass, did we? Harry Kane is in. Oh, he's foundering Cowboys. What a tackle that is. What a tackle. But it's coming back. Foyth. Highlight over. That was a weird highlight, but what a tackle that was at the end. I think it was maybe from Hedemovic, was it? Okay, can we defend? Aya clears. It's a bit scrappy. 30 minutes into the new season, we've had a brilliant preseason, and it's scrappy. Mariba tackles. I thought that was going to be a penalty, isn't it? Mbolo picks it up. He finds Taram. We're in. Is this going to be the first big chance of the game? Taram finish. Puts it wide. A really poor finish. Well done, though, Mbolo. Linking the player, holding it up. That's what we want from our presser. Right, corner, Trincao. It's a deep one. Harry Kane's going to get it at the far post. Are we getting it? We do. Nelson, can we break? Can we break? Almeida. Tonelli. We've got players to the right. If Tonelli's got the vision, he's found Almeida. We've got one on the right. It must be Imbolo. It is. Finish. He's put it wide as well. In exactly the same area that Chiram did. They're two big chances. Or oh, two good breaks. I think a point against Tottenham is not a bad result. They obviously finished Champions League last season, so points, taking anything off these big sides would be good. And then we really need to hammer home games against the lower, sort of like the other 14 teams, 13 teams in the league, right? Mariba, Turan, Almeida. He's sort of scooped it into the top corner, boys. We're up. We're 1-0 up. Get in. It says lovely strike. It was a weird one. He kind of just lofted it into the top corner. Nelson into Mariba. We do have good combinations here. Taram laid it off. Almeida, oh, to be fair to him, yeah, he looked a bit of a scoop. Scooped it up into the top corner. We'll take it. We'll take it. And I'm going to praise it. Right, 10 to go. Aya. Mariba. Into Taram. We're going to do some changes as well, regardless, because we've got people all over the pitch dying. Almeida. The kind of second half has been quiet. No highlights since the goal. Tonelli, Mariba. Turan blocked. I'm a little bit scared of a break again, boys. Mariba, is he just going to do it himself? Semedo. What's he going to do? What's he going to do? Cross. Nelson. And Bolo blocked. Good football again from us, though. Right. We're going to do two changes. We're going to get... Let's go a little bit strong in the midfield. We're going to go Burge and Rice. And the left hand side, let's get Eze on. Can we see it out? I'm going to ask for a focus, which they always hate. Why would focus be a negative impact on the squad? Just focus. Last few minutes of a big game, we've managed to win it. 1 0 to the Palace, boys. Get in. Get in. What a start to the season. Loads of greens. Positive start to the season. All right, boys, that is it. Thank you very much for watching. Smash a like on today's video. As I said at the start of the video, let me know. Best signings. What are your thoughts? Can we break Champions League this year? Or is it going to be? What would you take? I think the heart says Champions League. The head says, can we just maybe break up the top six again like we did last year? That would be brilliant. Cups. We're going to go for some cups and try and get some more silverware for the Palace. All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching. And we will see you next Sunday, halfway point of season four. Take care. See you later. They tell us lies.